to the broadcast. We're starting a new series this morning, taken from Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And we're going to have as our subject for this series, help in times of trouble. And I know many of you will say, oh my, it's been some trying times, some troubling times. But I want you to be encouraged and know that the Lord is with you. He promised us he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Let's know our scripture lesson today will be taken from 2 Kings chapter 4. So get out your Bibles, get you some paper and pencil to write with, and let us open our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4, and we'll be reading verse 1 to 7. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. Verse 1 to 7, may God have a blessing to the hearers of his red word. Now, our series verse 46 and 1 of Psalms, God is our refuge and strength. That word refuge means shelter. So what the psalm is, is saying, these are the sons of Korah that wrote this particular psalms, and that verse declares that God is dependable. Let me, let me say that again. God is dependable. We can count on Him when we are in trouble, we can count on him when everything around us seems to be falling apart. He's a very present help. Have you ever been in trouble? 
Oh, aren't you glad the Lord brought you out? Oh, hallelujah. Let's note then, as we examine the word, I select this scripture for today. First of all, let's note verse 1 in 2 Kings. We're dealing with the prophet Elisha, uh, the successor of the great prophet Elijah. Well, in verse 1, it tells us that this certain widow of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to the preacher, Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. Let's note the location. Well, they actually don't give us the location. But the location where this incident took place is not stated. But it probably was in an area of the cities of the school of the prophets where they were situated. And this would have been cities like possibly Bethel, Gilgal, or Jericho. The widow, after her husband had died, the creditor came and said, Well, y'all got a great debt. You either pay up or we're going to take your two boys as slaves. So the widow turned to Elijah the preacher for help in her hour of need. Now, I think we all would agree she was in trouble. Amen. The creditors wanted to take her boys. Note her appeal. She appealed to the preacher on the basis, there in verse 1, that her husband had been faithful to the Lord, my Lord. You know, I, I, I just can't go on till I ask you this question. Have you been faithful to the Lord? Have you been faithful during this pandemic in your worship services? Have you been faithful in prayer? Have you been faithful in giving? Have you been faithful? You know, the Lord want us to be faithful. Verse 1 also explains that the creditor was coming to take her sons and was going to make her sons his slave. Now, I want you to know the taking of these boys as slaves in payment for the debts was not uncommon in the ancient Near East. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I know, I know. Don't even say it. I'm glad they don't practice this custom in America. And you know why I'm so thankful they don't practice that? Because, see, some of you, if you had a great debt, and the creditors came to take your children, and the way some of your children talk back to you and, and disrespect you, you probably would tell the creditor, I tell you what, you take the boys, but please stamp my receipt paid in full. Goodbye, boys. Oh, oh my, 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 my. But no, 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 the preacher didn't do that. The preacher asked her, what do you have in the house? What, what's, what's in your house? Her reply was, I have nothing but a jar of oil. Now this was olive oil, which was used to for food and for fuel, okay? So Elisha instructed her to collect empty jars. And did you know, he said, collect them from everywhere. You see that in verse 3? 
just get as many as you can. The empty jars would be filled with oil that God would provide. Oh, hallelujah. The widow's faith, and I want you to miss this, the widow's faith can be measured by the number of empty jars that she collected. You say, well, where you see that? Well, you remember the instructions from the preacher? He said, go borrow vessels from everywhere. And then he said, empty vessels, don't miss it. He said, do not gather just a few. I, I can see some of you, if you was given this instruction, you're some of you just so reluctant to go even to your neighbor's house. Let, let me ask you a question. Do you know your neighbor's name? Do you know the children's name, the spouse? Do, do you know where they go to church? See, certain things you ought to know about your neighbor. See, I can tell you every one of my neighbors on the left, the right, the one in the front, huh? The one, two, or three, four doors down. Well, I know them by name. See, you ought to know your neighbors. You mean you don't know your neighbors where you live? Shame on you. How you going to win them and you haven't showed yourself friendly? You ought to know your neighbors. Well, she instructed her boys. I tell y'all what, boys. Go out there, go to that neighbor's house. You go over there to the right to that neighbor's house. By the way, the preacher said, get as many as I can let. I want you to go two or three blocks over. Go on down there to, to the Williams house, and you go on down there to the Flintstones, and go over there to the Rubbles, and uh, tell Bam Bam to help you to collect, collect some of them empty jars. Just get as many as you can. And all oh, this measured her faith. You know that woman and them boys collected some jars. Then the instructions. Don't miss it. Look at verse 4. And when you have come in after collecting all those jars, I want you and your sons to shut the door. Shut the door but behind you and your sons then pour in those vessels and then every time you pour in them vessels I want you to set them aside every one that's full oh hallelujah shut the door see the instruction here has an importance Shut the door meant privacy. Privacy for the task of pouring the oil. Not everyone was to see this. See what? This miracle take place. Only the widow and her son. Why? Because they were the direct beneficiaries of God's grace. Oh, hallelujah. They the one was going to see it. You know, that's what I like about serving the Lord. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes the people wonder why you so blessed. And how you are highly favored. And we know favor ain't fair. Sometimes they talk about, well, I was on this long waiting list. And the Lord somehow took your name from way out of the back of the pile and put it up front. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. So many times, praise God, God do great things for us because we are his. And the instructions shut the door. You remember what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount? When he said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, 
But you, when you pray, go into your closet or go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in secret, who is in that secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Oh, sometime when trouble have come our way, we ought to steal away and shut the door <laughs> and talk to Jesus. You know, maybe it's a good day for you to do that today. Oh, hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's go back to the story. So, verse 5 says, So she went from him. She shut the door behind her son. Uh, and, and and they brought the vessels to her and she pulled that one jar of oil that she had and and, and, and they would just hand her another empty vessel can't you can't you can can you just imagine can you see it they would bring another vessel that was empty an empty jar and, and she would pull out of that same jar Oh, hallelujah. And, and set that full jar, that jar that was empty but not full, she was set it aside. Then she asked them, boy, boy, hand me another jar. And, and, and they fill it up. And, and I can see them two boys, them sons, they had a, for a systematic way. The one would grab a empty jar and hand it to his brother. And that brother would hand it to mama and boy she was just pouring it oh come on now oh yeah just pouring that oil and, and, and I could just imagine them boys eyes just just growing why because every time they hand a nip empty jar and, and you know if you went down to to the rubber's house they gave you a big old container you know some of them probably gave them a big old igloo cooler just all kind of empty vessels and, and, and they just hand them to mama and, and she just pouring that oil and, and the more she pulled praise God it was just filling those containers up and, and, and look 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 then look at verse 6 now it came to pass when the vessels was full that she said to the to that son Bring me another vessel. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all y'all don't see it. Bring me another vessel. But by this time, all the vessels that they had borrowed was full now. And, and, and mama just steady pouring. She just pouring what? At that one jar of oil. She just steady pouring it. And, and, and God just providing oil. And, and she asked that boy one more. But give me another, send me another job. Mama, that's the last one. <laughs> Glory. Ooh, come. Oh, you, you in trouble today. Don't, you better know God will bring you out. You know God will come to your rescue. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from the Lord that made the heavens and the earth. Bring me another vessel. The little boy said, look at it, verse 6, there is not another vessel, mama. Mama, it ain't no more. We don't took every one the rubbles gave us, the Flintstones, the booms, and, 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 and all the neighbors that gave us an empty vessel. We, we don't, every one we brought in the house and shut the door, they all full. Look what verse 6 said. Then the oil ceased. Wow. Long as there was empty jars and containers and vessels and coolers, she was pouring out oil. God was providing. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. God was providing. God want to provide for you. 
God want to show himself mighty to you. Will you trust him? Will you depend on him? Yes, he is my refuge and my strength. And all behold, look at verse 7. Then she came to the man of God, went back to the preacher. Preacher, I don't did as you said. And I don't got all these vessels full. Look what the preacher said. He said, go then and sell the oil and pay your debts. She went and sold the oil. Y'all, come on, y'all. I hope you don't miss it. She paid her debt. And oh, praise God, the full amount. And guess what? Just like God, she had some extra. She had some money left over. Don't miss it. He said, she paid her debt. And he said, and, and what you got left, you and your sons live on the rest. What are you saying here? See, that's what I like by God. If we ask him, he always give us more than what we ask. He have us operating in the overflow. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad when you ask him, he give you more than enough. He, he meet your debt and, and get you out of trouble. And then he, he so empower you and bless you that you can be a blessing to others you operating in the overflow oh hallelujah I'm so excited today because I know God is our refuge in our strength oh yes I'm so glad that I know that the God we serve is able to bring us out he told us to ask and we shall receive. He says seek. And you shall find. He said knock. And that door shall be open. Oh why don't you praise him right now. And oh why don't you remember. When he do it for you. Remember. To give thanks. Oh hallelujah. We want to say. We invite you. Again. To our broadcast on next week. As we continue our series, praise God, concerning, oh, help in times of trouble. If you enjoyed your lesson today in this teaching, please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. Please, ma'am, please, sir. And we ask your continual prayers for us as we continue to humble ourselves and be the servant the Lord is calling for in these last and evil days. We love you, and again, remember to give thanks.